as an additional precaution, I have these screws, I'm using them as set screws, and they actually drive right into the half inch axle. This way, even if one of the white guards was ripped off during a battle, there is still some mechanical means to hold the axle in. One of the worst things you could have happen during a battle is your weapon axle coming loose, sliding out, or falling out, because then your high-speed weapon will be able to fall out of the robot and strike something. Of course, the weapons are meant to be dangerous, but in a controlled way. Go ahead and put the guard back on, just to make sure we don't hurt ourselves. It's not knife sharp, but it is a solid block of steel, so. There are still several other parts of the robot that are undone, but this is the main componentry. Some things left to do still are to attach a pulley on this side of the weapon so that a belt can be run from the motor to the weapon to generate torque on the weapon. Also, as I mentioned, the bot should have armor to protect the wheels. And I also noticed that there's a bit of a bow in this piece right here. And so perhaps that piece is a little too long. Also, we need to install the receiver. The receiver is what ties all the electronics together. It receives the signals from the transmitter or controller, and it reroutes them to all the various parts of the robot. In our case, we have a wire for the weapon motor, two wires for the drive motors, one for each motor, We also have a power LED so that we know when the robot is on. And finally, we'll need to connect all of the heavy duty power wires that run from the battery. So we have this switch assembly, which has several of these yellow XT60 connectors, which I prefer because they don't rattle out or they don't come out whenever you don't intend them to. They hold together very nicely and they have larger connectors so that they allow more electricity to flow safely. Connect the weapon motor controller. I have a hole in the, the chassis of the drive assembly. And we have another yellow XT60 connector. And this would connect to the battery, but for safety reasons, I don't want to connect the battery at the moment. That's why I have this tape over it, just to make sure nothing can get in there and short it out. Well, with all these components connected correctly, 
the robot would be able to drive. The magnets. Something else I'd like to show you about this robot, which I did not mention at the beginning, although they were there. We'll get an underside view of this, is that on the side panels, I have attached two neodymium magnets. Let me take one off to show you. Now, it's very important that these magnets don't get too close to the ground, or they might stick to something. If they stick to the ground, they'll drag, and they'll have so much friction, you won't be able to drive. However, they are beneficial because, as long as they're not dragging on the ground, they apply more force to the back of the robot and it causes the rear wheels to be crushed against the ground. This increases the friction. It really increases the traction as well and allows the robot to push with more strength. Also, because the weapon is very heavy, without the magnets, the robot tends to pivot forward. And that causes the rear wheels to make less contact with the ground. So the magnets just ensure that the drive wheels are able to move the robot easily. Now you'll notice I have to push on the back of the robot in order for the wheels to make contact with the ground. Now, we have installed strong magnets on the bottom of the robot since the arena floor we'll be fighting on is made of steel. And this works out pretty well for us, but when the robot is on any other surface, such as this concrete floor, it will struggle to get the back wheels to make contact. That is because the robot is more front heavy and it tends to tip upward instead of pushing the wheels down. One, battle! Ladies and gentlemen, through sheer force alone, the veterans flipped themselves. Woo! Gentlemen, uh, somewhat of a design flaw with the flipping. I mean, it was purposeful, but now it's stuck. Oh! If they can avoid those sides, they should be good. Oh! Woo! Hammer tube, pinning them down. Thank you. 
likes me the bot. That maneuver is impressive. Taking chunks out of Hammer 2. Waiting for better at this next hit. There you go, folks. Hammer 2 is being torn apart but still fighting. Which seems to have calmed down after an explosive first two minutes. Get him! Hammer two attempting to pull out some last minute pins. That was a good one. They have to separate. It doesn't look like they are able to. Stop the clock with nine seconds remaining. All right, ladies and gentlemen, have nine seconds to go. Start the match. Three, two, one, battle. Better is no longer able to flip without those points. It's going to go to the judges. Better Ridge is red, Hammer to the blue, an impressive battle. That was a good one. Yeah, Ladies and gentlemen, my split decision, your winner is Hammer 2! <laughs>